thank nice. you for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. Of course. And so for everybody that doesn't know, this is a part of our series of our talks. So we're very thankful to, to have you join us. We've interviewed many people and many artists from all over the world. And it's very uh, important for us to sort of connect and to share our stories with each other as, as a, an artistic community. And so we're happy to have you. And for those of you that don't know, I'll tell you a little bit about Carolina before we can, you know, totally jump into uh, her life story. And so this is how you spell your name, Carolina. And so just a little bit about, about you, Carolina. So Carolina is an acclaimed Swedish artist. She started her career in New York and actually not even in New York. That's not true. You started your career in Sweden in the 1990s doing graffiti under the alias Blue. Uh, you were a member of the Fantastic Partners and still are and the Hardcore Chicks working together with artists like Sento, Case 2, Pink and others. Today you're based in Gothenburg, Sweden. Since the 90s, you've been developing your style of graffiti, but also pushing yourself into other forms of art, musical, uh, performative, and other, you know, related to social practice. You regularly are a collaborator with other artists, musicians, public uh, organizations, and which is very special. You are a process-based artist, and apart from, you know, working with spray paint, uh, and drawing, you've also made sculptures, performance, uh, lyrics, music, videos. You're sort of an all-around dynamo. And we really want to get into your work because you work uh, in, in so many different fields. But we're going to start talking to you about sort of the beginnings of, of your career and, and of some of your art. So this is... Um, when I first uh, encountered your work and really started to see you kind of getting, getting around, this is some of the stuff that I saw. And it was, it was based with, uh, with, with fairies and, and so, you know, these, this fantastical world. And, you know, the way that I, you know, recall you, you know, talking to me about this is it has to do with sort of your, your life and your roots and where, and where you grew up. So can you share with us, you know, a little bit about where you're from and how you discovered painting? I am from uh, Sweden, from the countryside, the forests of Sweden. I grew up there and I kind of discovered graffiti riding the trains to the city of Gothenburg where I saw big burners on the side of the tracks and I was very attracted to them as a small child and my mother told me that I could do that when I was a grown up and obviously I started doing that so yeah and so when when did you go from someone that was a fan you know riding on the trains to actually saying hey I'm going to do that and and what was that like for you Sometimes when I was a teenager, I just started to go out and spraying stuff and writing things on my school. Basically, I think I kind of protested against. I just started to discover there were alternative worlds than the one we live in that, you know, you're supposed to believe in and there are other belief systems and writing your own story kind of was attracting to me. So using spray paint as a way of like kind of breaking the ongoing language that people were talking and instead just writing things on the walls kind of was a very fantastic thing to me. I just thought it was fun. And and, and yeah. what, how was it received? Uh, differently, I guess. I mean, I was probably waiting to see reactions from people as a child painting things in the night and then seeing what people would see them as in the daytime like the paintings and yeah it's kind of a magic world and and yeah. and what was you know I, i'm sure that some of those reactions are positive some of them were negative what what did your your parents 
uh, feel or, or, you know, think about this? Oh my God, parents. <laughs> yeah, I think I moved away from home a long way from home when I was 16. So they didn't really could check up on me what I was doing. So I kind of just did what I felt like doing. So they didn't really know. To begin that's, with. that's very lucky for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, you know, you, you eventually, uh, you know, I guess, was this in Stockholm? Yeah. Are you talking so. about when you, yeah, when not... you started discovering, you know, more being in school and painting? I was uh, in in high school riding horses and riding and riding is kind of the same thing. So I just swapped over to the magic world of colors instead of sports, sort of. So uh, that was in uh, the south of Sweden, actually. I moved to Stockholm to go to another school where it was which was more spiritual and um, anthroposophical. So. And also that's where I got more into the culture of graffiti, I guess. Is that where you, uh, is that where you first encountered uh, writers or other writers that were serious and were out painting? Exactly, in my school and around that area, yeah. Because that so, was something that I wanted to do. I always had like drawing and painting inside of me as a, uh, my most natural thing to do so yeah spraying seemed so much more direct with the colors and the fastness and the stuff that spray paint has that pencils don't really do the trick so was your what when you started using spray and trying to translate some of these ideas that you had on paper was it an easy it sounds like it might, might have been easy for you to use this new tool yeah i mean the freedom of the nights that kind of is given to you if you take it as you know just having a pen and paper in the day and being in school and then just going out in the night and taking whatever surface that you want to paint on that that freedom is giving a big freedom to the expression as well. So I guess that's a big part of it, like having the night and having all this surface of the city and the space that is just there to paint on instead of regular canvases or things like that it wasn't really my type of surface. Well, it sounds like you had a an idea that the city belonged to you or that the walls belonged to you. Sort of. I kind of felt connected to like a spiritual world with creatures that has their own language. And I was just a translator for them. That's why I like I have to paint all these characters and things that were talking through me and my dreams and fantasies and thoughts and and so you know i in in doing the research for the talk today i tried to find some of these uh spiritual or fantasy uh creatures that you're mentioning and i came across this old drawing from from yeah. the 90s and you you were drawing you know these creatures they seemed like they were out of the woods yeah probably Right. This is sort of out of your imagination. And so it went from from painting them, you know, or drawing them there and, and then translating them on the walls and mm -hmm. uh, and sort of sharing your your vision or your ideas uh, with everybody. And so at, at some point you decided to become blue and, and adopt a new identity for yourself. What was that yeah. about and and how did you decide on the name Blue? Well, that came from actually someone, people started calling me, someone, someone, made, someone started calling me Blue or actually Betty Blue from this movie, I guess, just a female creature 
being very wild and psychotic. I don't know if I was psychotic at that age, but maybe I looked like this person. I I think I lost you there for a second. Yeah. Okay, so we're back. You see me? Yeah. Or you see this? See okay, you. cool. So, so you were saying the story about Betty Blue. Yes, it was more some a name someone gave to me and I and I kind of focused on the color because I love the color blue and the state of mind that is so I, I just felt that was me at that time very young and very blue so you 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 know we'll we'll fast forward a little bit so you adopted this name blue you became a writer and you started to paint and when we first met, you were painting. We painted trains together in Copenhagen. Yeah. You know, fast forward, you decided you showed up, you moved to New York. And when exactly. you moved to New York, it was, was it the late 1990s? Yeah. And so here there's yeah. a photo of yourself painting one of your many raucous records walls. Yeah. In, in, in the city. And you came with a style that didn't look like anything from New York. Where did, where did this style, where did your, your lettering style develop from? Uh, initially, I didn't really like so much of the letters that I saw growing up in Sweden they were they were like too mechanical for me. I kind of more was into like flowing more organic style so I tried to develop whatever was inside of me I guess that I liked doing I was had a very strong feeling for what I wanted to do or paint really like I'm totally run by emotionals so that's where it comes from inside and here you see some very complex work you know you, you you were painting these organic sort of feeling pieces but sometimes they got really really wild yeah i kind of like to weave the stuff into each other and and braid and make it more complex i mean a, a piece like this and when when you're painting these letters are these planned are you improvising i mean what, it's what's... improvised uh, uh, it's always improvised letters and so you don't necessarily go in with a plan it's more like a is it more like a mood or a feeling yeah it's definitely a mood and a feeling let's see what else we have a few other pieces that i'd like to show and so when you were in new york in the 90s uh you were very active and you were very active piecing, whether it was in the Bronx or in Manhattan or in Brooklyn. And you were doing these wonderful pieces and they were very different from any New York kind of graffiti. How did, how did New Yorkers react to your work? You know, how was it received in these neighborhoods that you were painting in? Differently, I guess. It's a long time ago, so, but I remember positive things mostly actually and you started to paint with uh other artists yeah at the time and so you, you had a good a, a group of collaborators and i remember seeing many of these pieces around and they were you know you were out there hustling for paint for walls just trying to become part of the city and uh it, it was not an easy time to be out there painting, but you made it look very easy. Oh, 
I did it just because it was fun. And here's here's another one of uh, your walls. This one in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. So you were painting in in these neighborhoods uh, before they were gentrified. You were painting everywhere. You, you, I remember you being quite fearless in in you know going around the city. Uh, were you you know as a visitor? from from Sweden to New York, did you feel like you were an outsider or was a city, did it, did it embrace you? I think both. I felt very embraced and very big part of the city. Like I felt like it was my city in a way, even though I didn't grow up there, I, I totally adapted to it. But then again, I was also, you know, a stranger or a tourist just playing around sort of. And yeah, it, but it felt like a love affair with the city <laughs> itself and the walls. Well, you, you definitely gave a lot of yourself to the city in just all these pieces that, that you're, you know, painting everywhere. And this was in Williamsburg as well. And, you know, very, very cool pieces. And, and like I said earlier, very distinct from what, you know, other writers were bringing to the table. As a young woman at the time, how did, you know, did you feel uh, anything, you know, strange, you know, with any of the male writers in the city or what, or was being a woman not really uh, a thing? I guess it was, I guess uh, being a young woman in the nineties was sort of a thing like I was, it was not so many other women writers, so it was mostly male writers and mostly men everywhere. And the, the culture was really different and it was very much more sexist. And, uh, oh, what's the word for it? It's like, uh, um, I can't really find the words, but it's it was sort of difficult in many ways. It's, it's a struggle, but it was also had its um, good things about it, of course. I guess I mean, both you, good and bad. You you being um, a member of a crew like TFP at the time that had a lot of respect and and deep history, did that give you a bit of a pass or like, you know, uh, some help at all or, or no? I guess uh, in some ways, probably, it probably did. Yeah. It's uh, giving me a lot of good people to paint with, definitely. I most because of the time felt like I had good painting partners, which mattered sure. a lot. Sure, because it, it is a very elite crew that you were down with yeah and so again to just to show these walls you know these walls are not these are not small pieces you paint very large and and know yeah, how to I take can. up space yeah and and in your walls you know i think one of the things that that i see recurring in your walls you have these messages on these old pieces like you know universal uh, love, you know, there, there is a, a positivity that you are spreading with these works. And then we, we move into this type of work. So this is a work of on paper that looks a bit different from all the, the street stuff that we saw. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit about, you know, how do you go how did you go from doing you know the traditional graffiti on the walls to moving into more of illustration and more of you know your studio work but i guess i've always been drawing and painting so it just comes naturally for me to evolve it in different ways this is drawn on some architectural piece which i first drew on the building and tore it down and then drew on the sketches for the actual building so that was a process itself that I did in 2010 and so m many years many years later after you know you know leaving New York 
you go to Sweden and you become this, you know, big muralist or very respected public artist. And, you know, the walls that you start to paint are on an enormous scale. You know, this being one of them, you can see your, you can see the, the scale of the person on top uh, versus the wall. How did you, how did you find the, the, I guess the courage or the inspiration to move from painting smaller works of graffiti to really exploring your imagination and doing things like this. How, what was that like for you? I guess the spirit of graffiti is uh, um, like very large in itself. And it's like explosion, explosional currency in the way that writing is made the language itself has like unlimited power inside of it so I guess it was just natural for me to like take more and more space and make the paintings larger that's because that's their nature sort of and definitely this this style that I developed here with painting circles sort of or like um, feather more structures it's like an eternal pattern just kind of no limits sort of painting style and you see these patterns within your work these circles yeah. these these teardrops but then you also see explosions of colors and you start to see also lots of, of nudity, lots of, of, you know, human figures or, uh, you know, women in your paintings, which is very d different than your traditional uh, graffiti. What, what made this become your, one of your sort of subject matters? Yeah, I guess it was, um, I became feminist, aware of feminism when I had a child in 2003. And then I started interests in that sort of political aspect of society and the indifferences and the injustice in history. So been focusing on that and also as a woman and trying to take up more space with my paintings and um, very interested in the body and what you can do with it and what's why is it here for and what it's supposed to do and what it wants to do and how a painting and the body belongs together sort of and the spirits of course that's why it's large because it's big breathing system so uh, can you tell us a little bit about this particular painting uh... this particular painting is called the fucking witch it's a memorial because in sweden we have this witch trials in the 17th century where a lot of innocent women, men and children were burnt or killed because of witchery. So I did this memorial of this fucking witch, this, this big woman who's just back in time and the memory of witchery and the history that has judged people. And I think I also felt very judged growing up being just being a woman and just being an artist and being a writer and not being fit into society the way you're like supposed to be you know being your own way and expressing your own vibe and taking that that space when you when you painted this piece uh was it was it rece well received you know what what did people how did people react to to this yeah they received it very well in the city very super well definitely i, was a, I love um, that is is yeah. it still there it's still there yeah i still get pictures sent to me from it every now and then i love that yeah 
and you have gone on to create many, many large works all over Sweden and, and the world. And, and this one, I believe this one's called Pi, is that correct? Yeah, exactly. It's a sign from the Swedish sign language, which is an amplifying sign. I had painted another painting a few blocks away from that one, which there was a vagina in it. And, and uh, just saying that I really meant that painting to be there, I made this sign because it's amplifying this, the forthcoming painting. So you they know, all belong together. The, this this painting, this sign language painting has this, you know, this the, the filling of this, the decoration, the interior, the designs, this motif. You see the circles again coming back uh, that you're so well known for, which is which is a really wonderful thing. And then but this painting, what what's interesting about this painting when I saw it in person is that it is on a, a building, a residential building. Yeah. This is like, you know, people live with this painting. It's in a residential neighborhood. And so you're really, you know, your art is living with the people. It's not, you know, out where, you know, people are not seeing it. It's, it's part of the community. And so when you're painting these works, how, how do members of the community react to you when you're there and, you know, they see this woman painting these, you know, giant murals? Yeah, with curiosity, depending on the motive, of course, I guess uh, this motive is, was just met with curiosity and interest from the people living there. A lot of engagement, I'm sure, conversations yeah. about what you're doing there. Why are you in their neighborhood? Exactly. People getting me coffee and, you know, being very nice. Stuff like that. Here, here you have another one of these these murals that is, you know, with feathers, also very, very large. And you're you're expanding from these, you know, these this human anatomical uh, paintings to these these sort of fantasy creatures. What, can you tell us, us a little bit about this? Yeah, this is actually like a. a fantasy of reindeer because the, the the indigenous people of Sweden has reindeers and making drums out of reindeers, the shamans of those tribes. And they have these um, drum travels and the Swedish government in the 1700th century burned these drums and forbid their religion sort of. So I wanted to make a reindeer like coming back in time with the drum sound and the traveling of the mind in a painting you know it, it's your work it pulls from history it pulls from you know old history from your country from the cities that you're painting with it's you know you're continuing you're having a conversation about the past of your your country uh it's very powerful and do people understand that conversation that you're having? And, and, and if so, um, how, do, how do people react to that, to the history that you're sharing? Yeah, hopefully positive, depending on the place, yeah. It's, this one. Yeah, yeah this can you tell was, us about this one? Yes, it was painted in a school. I started writing words like negative words towards women in schools this is in, in a high school and then I painted it over with this vagina sort of painting and when the municipality saw it they kind of wanted to take it down because it was a female body the way it is and uh, you know they couldn't just take it down so they had to build a wall in front of it and it was a lot like I got a lot of uh, controversy from this painting it was in 2014 so this is uh this is the the wall that was covered that ended up having to be voted on whether it should exist or not is that correct 
sort of yeah and then it finally got to exist and the students in the school took the wall down so it all and so this piece well. is also still in existence yes it is so you know these works that you're creating you know they're very special works I, i'm imagining that the organizations the schools and the places that you contribute these pieces to are very excited and very happy to have it and, and are very protective of keeping these paintings. Yeah. And here we have another one from 2014. Uh, uh, this is, uh, it, it's an, uh, one of your murals and I believe this one was indoors, is that correct? Yes, it is. It is indoors here in Gothenburg. Another yeah. wonderful piece. Again, you're bringing and showing women in your murals, mm -hmm. which we love. Can you tell us a little bit about this? This is this yeah. is one of your sign language murals. Yes, it says techno. I did a triptych, three walls with sign language, techno, Tekna and tekna. Tekna means draw in Swedish, and it's almost the same word for draw, techno, and techne. The, th the third word is like a Greek old word for knowledge and skill. So, I kind of made those three go together and painted three different walls with sign language. I that's kind of my getting back into letterings through the body using sign language and painting hands, signing letters. I've been doing that for many years now. I, I love doing that. Hands. When when you're painting a wall like this, is this um, also improvised? I mean, how much how much are you no, improvising and how much are you planning out? That one is totally planned because I have to research the gestures because I don't know sign language by heart, so I have to research them and study them and, in order to paint them. And this is this is a, a very large wall. I mean, it's your your many stories up. Yeah. Yeah, How did you stories. right eight stories? I mean, you know, you you're working on a really large scale. I mean, is that something that you are you found easy easy to scale up? Because that is, you know, from on painting on the ground to painting entire sides of buildings is a totally different thing. Yeah, I guess it's just the focus, focusing the eye, the gaze has to be very sharp in these circumstances. And that's practicing and having, you know, wanting the thing to be perfect. I guess that's ambition. And this particular piece, or and and or this triptych, where was it? What town is it in? And and how it's did it Uppsala. come about? Okay. It was the year of peace in Sweden, and and then then this the mission was to to make a piece of about what peace means to me, and in in order to create my work, I need to draw and I need techno music and I need the skills. So those three words for those three states of minds or things, I painted those words. Wonderful. And I'm, 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 a, I'm guessing, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, when you had that controversy with the school, that put you on the national news. It put you on the map in a very different way than before that wall. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. And did that open up more doors for you to be able to get commissions like this? I guess so. I mean, it's uh, media and uh, getting to know. And the people, and yeah, pe people getting to know your work and then yeah. wanting to to have you, uh, you know, this, this wonderful artist come and and share your work with them. Mm -hmm. And so can you tell us a little bit about this piece? Yeah, it's uh, also in a school, but it's outdoors from on the school side of the wall. It was a drawing that I made in 
music studio in Malmo when I was recording songs. I just did that drawing and felt that it had to go up on the wall. It's kind of a body that is not anatomically correct. It's very broken and bent and sort of how a woman has to be in public just to in order to survive there the way she is bent it, over in all kind of directions i i see that in in, uh, in even upside down yeah exactly. they've chosen it's to like put upside trick. down yeah and you have this this these colors that you've selected uh, they, they seem to be recurring. They're almost like these um, dissolving, you know, energies with words sometimes, you know, popping through. Do you do you remember the words that you added into into this mural? Because I see a few. Yeah, I think uh, there is something about uh, escape route and uh, honesty. Um, I can't remember all of them, but I like writing, so that's just tagging some words on the wall that I want to be there forever, sort of like some kind of poetry. It's it's truly a wonderful piece, Thank and you. around the same time you created this piece, yes, another it's a, beautiful it's an piece. Old, Thank you. It's an old mental hospital, which now has a, an, an art gallery. So I painted there with the kind of color of, of skin with bruises, because I thought the people being in the mental hospital are very bruised souls. So that's why the skin color, of the background is there. I can see it. And, and that theme comes up, up. In, in some of your other works as well. And I wanna get mm -hmm. into that um, in just a minute. This, this piece here, uh, this is another one of these pie pieces. Yeah. Another, another gigantic mural um, surrounded by other murals. This, is, this mural exists alongside other works from other artists uh, and it is in a quite a a, again, a residential place mm -hmm. that, you know, it's a, it's a real gift to be able to see these. And this is the one that I wanted to, to bring up that is thematically like the other one with, with the bruises, the body with the bruises. Um, and I think this was in Istad, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, there is so much vi violence towards women and women bodies, female bodies are historically and constantly being abused and beaten. So I kind of wanted to highlight that by painting the bruises actually on the body. This is this, there's a lot of pain in, in this particular painting. Yeah. And it's, uh, I, I remember seeing this in person and it, it, you know, it's, it's hard to tell the scale. This is also, this is a massive, painting it's mm -hmm. you know a few stories tall and it's on a main uh road so you know people are seeing this every single day as they drive up and down this street yeah. when you started creating the, these paintings that have to do with you know women's pain uh you know were, were you able to have those conversations in in the media and in public and and did it bring more attention to to this struggle that that you and and women you know experience yeah i think so i i hope so that that it uh, all the media attention that the paintings gained also could like synergies to the conversation around those topics in general definitely which we go back and forth between these styles and you're, you're, you know, you're working in these styles with, with human anatomy um, and these textures, and then you bring in these sign language paintings 
Can you tell us a little bit about what this one says? This one says techni. It was the third word in the other triptych. It's uh, the word, Greek word for skill and knowledge in crafts. And that's something that you have to have. It's sort of almost like technique, like the technique you're using to do your work. And also it's repetition. It means repetition. So you have to repeat yourself all the time in order to gain skills, do it over and over again, sort of. Now, here the, here we have two pieces, right? I don't know if this is two pieces or if this is one piece. I know one of them is, is it ear to the ground? Yeah, it's a sound piece, which has different soundtracks inside of it. So you can listen to it. Yeah. And then, so can you tell us, you know, where this painting uh, is and, and a little bit about the story behind this painting? Yeah, the painting is in, uh, it was a show that I had called Words, Sound and Sex. There's three words and um, yeah, it's in a, in a gallery sort of, yeah, in 2016. So, and so, and so here you have, you know, you have a, a, a woman's vagina or a woman's body, you know, focusing on, on her vagina and it's red. It almost seems bruised as well. And then you have in front of it, you have this painting of an ear that you're saying is a sound installation. What was in the sound? What was the sound installation of and, and what were you you know, what were you communicating here with folks? What were you, what was your intention? Yes, it's later developed to me recording people talking about sexual abuse and their experiences in that. So that's what it has become now. At that point, it was uh, sketches for uh, the other works that I did recording songs improvised songs that uh, I record to have listened to when I paint to have Got my it. own voice and words yeah and so and so as it as it transformed into a piece about sexual abuse and you know and women's bodies was yeah. that you know readily acceptable from these institutions that you're you know you're painting at, or was it desired, you know, to be able to have these, these tough conversations? Uh, I, I had them and then I delivered it to the institution. They, afterwards, this is uh, from another museum of art in Eskilstuna. Yeah. Another wonderful piece. Spray and painting. It's, this is, and this is spray paint. Yeah, it is. And so I just want to, you know, take a moment to say to everybody, uh, thank you for being with us and joining us today to have this conversation with Carolina Falkalt and get to learn a bit about her work and her process and, and her really uh, special career and what she's contributing to society with her public work. And so, Again, thank you for, for being with us. And we're going to continue to have this conversation and continue to show some more of your work. But Carolina, thank you so much. Let's continue. Um, there's, there's so many works that you've created that are powerful that talk about whether it's, um, you know, sexuality or whether it's, uh, you, know, you know, women's uh, rights or whether it's, you know, abuse. Um, you've really taken a, a bold stance in, in what you want to express and what you want to share. Uh, I can't imagine that it's easy from a personal perspective for yourself because I, I, I think of people as being very um, conservative in, 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 in life is, do you experience it the same way? 
Yeah, I, I've experienced a lot of conservative people trying to stop my work in many ways, many different times, and received a lot of threats and things, and people wanting to me to stop doing my work because of conservatism or whatever it's called. But I guess you're always going to have these narrow-minded people that doesn't want to evolve society that we live in. This, this work, this work is called train of thought yeah. and it's, uh, it's on a real train. It's both sides, uh, in a place called Wanas. Uh, and it's, it's kind of in the middle of a sculpture park in the middle yeah. of a forest and you walk through to get there, you walk through the forest and you come upon this, this piece, this train completely covered by you with, you know, with your circles, with your, you know, your, your sort of, you know, uh, feather organic paintings also incorporating a vagina here and it's protected. And it's, it's, it's a big deal to be invited to have painted a train in this place. Yeah. This is this for folks that don't know, this is it's a really big deal. Some of these works that we're seeing, this one in particular, it's it's in, you know, one of the most respected um, institutions, art institutions in Sweden. And of all things, you know, Carolina, you that have a background painting trains and you painted trains illegally, you're given a gift of a train to paint legally. It's 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 really curious and very cool. Yeah, I'm very happy about it. And it's still there, correct? Yes, it is. And here we go into uh, another another very large work. I'm gonna, you know, our time unfortunately is short. We have another ten minutes, so I'm gonna jump through some of these images and just share them with our audience. And we'll get into a little bit of your of your studio work. And so this is one of your exhibitions uh, in Sweden, one of your solo exhibitions. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2017. Yeah. And this is also part of that exhibition. Uh, can you tell us? about this work because this this like the other work the other work actually let's go back for a minute this reminds me of some kind of a womb or something like we've entered into um you know some type of a, a space that's sacred yeah and then this other work it feels very very different and it's is it i think it's from the same show is that correct it is. It is actually the process of me painting in that school where, where you, the image you showed before, where I painted this vagina that they build a wall in front of. These are the words I started writing and destroying because I wanted to destroy those negative terms that are used against women, like downgrading them. And and and. So that's very, very interesting. So these are process shots and then all around yeah. it are pictures of you. Yeah. With words over it. You, exactly. The show is called You Devil Whore. So that's the, what it says, Din Jävla Hora on the poster of the show. So I just made a collage from that. Incredible. And so, you know, so You Devil Whore you're yeah. dealing with you're dealing with these these negative stereotypes exactly within your work and you're choosing to you know to dive into something very uh powerful and and very painful that women go through you know and you continue to to, to sort of go there i would say and, and and speak on this when you did this you know this is uh, a big gallery show, you're taking a, a really big stance. 
deciding to do this kind of work. Like you didn't have to do this. You could have done something else. How is it received by, by men? And then how was it received by women? Is it, was there a difference? You know, how, how did this go about? I think since it's a gallery show, it was received well, like positive curiousness around. It's mostly like when I do the public work that is, it can get more critical when it reaches people further out, like when it goes through the media and reaches out to people that are, are conservative, that they don't, you know, agree with my work. But here, I think it went positive. It, it must be, it must take a lot out of you as a painter to channel these and look at these issues and deal yeah. with it emotionally i mean right it's and psychologically of yes of course it does but uh, i have lots of emotions so i can just use that as a great material for working within these fields of art This painting, you know, reminds me a bit of the painting in the in the gallery downstairs. Yeah. But this particular painting, I think that there was a very, I, I'm not sure if this is the one we talked about this once upon a time, about this story. Is this the one that's tied into this, this, uh, like an older story that you painted? Is that correct? No, this one I did, it gets... Uh, actually crossed out the, the night before the opening of the festival that it was part of. Okay. So is that, is that something that happens to your walls? Your walls get crossed out? Yeah, that happens or washed away. Yeah, is it more, it is it more when it's, when it's, you know, themes of, you know, female sexuality or the vagina paintings or anything having to do with sexuality? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So this this is an important topic for us to discuss, which is censorship. And, you know, and so here's another piece. And it, can you tell us about this one? It's a collage on a wooden board that I did uh, when I had my residency in New York in 2018. So here, here you're doing a collage piece. This is... And Osby, I want to I'm going to skip over a few of these images because I want to get into the issue of censorship mm -hmm. and the issues of you being in New York and you deciding to um, paint, you know, similar uh, works that you might have been painting in Sweden with sexualities such as this one, which is in lower Manhattan. And it's a, it's one of your vagina paintings. And then you decide to paint here for folks to see a close-up of it. And then you paint a penis painting. Yeah. And this painting was destroyed. It was, it was painted over after just a few days and, and censored. And it was mm -hmm. quite controversial in New York City. Yeah. yeah. Why did you think, why do you think your, your vagina painting lasted and, and the penis painting didn't? The vagina painting is more abstract. It has a lot of eyes and, and other stuff in it. So it's more like a cartoonish kind of camouflaged vagina, sort of. The penis is more naturalistic and direct. It's more like a penis portrait, sort of. So I think it's, that's, it got too much for whoever decided to wash it away, the building owners. And I, I don't really get it though, but I thought it was just perfectly fits on that wall. It, it, it's the right shape for the, for the, uh, for the, for the wall. And so yeah. this caused quite a storm for you. And I remember that this was a bit distressing just to see your work come down so quickly yeah and then you decided to go and you know maybe maybe it was just americans that were conservative 
and you went and painted one in Sweden as almost like an answer to the yeah. other one. Exactly. In in the colors of the Swedish flag. Yeah. Yeah, but, but it was also taken down. I thought Sweden would be less uh, conservative than the US, I thought. But no, it, it was taken down. And it even had some protest statements on it. Exactly. Yeah. And so people aren't comfortable with with penises in public genitalia. or no. genitalia in public. It's very strange. And so this, you were, you were challenged because they censored you twice. Uh, yeah. But not only was you censored, you ended up receiving a tremendous amount of hate graffiti. I mean, hate mail and, and threats just because you painted human genitalia. Yeah. It's incredible. A lot of that. Yeah. It's, inc it's incredible. I mean, it's just a painting and it has a very common topic. Or like very everybody everybody has control. one or the other yeah exactly yeah and so you know the i guess the 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 some of the comments and some of the the the, the attacks against you were about it being inappropriate for children and how maybe if you were a mother you would know better but you actually are a mother exactly right and so yeah. what and, and so, so what what is your stance on that i mean you 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 know you're a mother you know you're painting in the public this is for you this is a form of expression you're trying to open up a conversation what's what's the conversation i mean the conversation that wasn't there when i grew up like being young there was not the conversation around sexuality and the body and our gender it was not there. It was just uh, something mysterious that you were like not really allowed to talk to, and it was bad and and all kinds of negative stuff. So I just wanted to bring a positive light upon sexuality and the differences that it includes. It's such a large topic and so important and it's core of our life and love. And so with and. And with you painting these these murals, you did have success in making that a conversation. You did get, yeah. have people to start to talk about it, good or bad. It worked. Yeah, that's that was the whole point to get the, the conversation going, and I think it's not over. But the 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 conversation that you started with these pieces they quickly you know you know erased your your images to stop the conversation <laughs> yeah very and, strange. and and so it's very strange and it's it's quite it must be very frustrating for you to uh to put the work in there and have it uh silenced i will make new ones that's 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 a, the best way to be. And so we <laughs> yeah. have, uh, you know, we have with us, everybody, we have with us Carolina Falkolt. Uh We have a few minutes left, uh, unfortunately. And so if there's any questions out there from the audience, you're welcome to uh, ask them now. You could ask them in the comments section and, uh, and maybe we'll get Carolina to answer your question. And then otherwise, uh, Carolina, I think it's very, very, uh, you know, fortunate for all of us to have an artist in our generation like yourself that is challenging social norms, painting from the heart and, and painting, you know, things and, and topics that sometimes people don't want to talk about. So we're, we're very thankful for the work that you do. Thank and you. it's very, uh, it's very important for us and for our children and for everybody else's children, you know, you know, not everybody is, as open as you are, or maybe that I am uh, about sexuality, you know, and, uh, you know, people becoming, seems like people becoming more conservative. And so these are important uh, topics to bring up. And I think that the work that you're doing is, um, is courageous and, and, it's, and it's worth doing. So thank you very much for what you do. 
the things that we didn't get into uh, today uh, on this short talk is your music, your performance art, uh, your, you know, your collages, you know, you, you do so much. Uh, if people wanted to find out more about your work or hear your music, where can they uh, see that or hear that? On Spotify or SoundCloud. My name is there and yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, so, 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 so folks, I, I, I highly recommend for everybody to, uh, to take a moment and listen to Carolina's music uh, and follow her work. You know, as we saw today, you know, her work is, is out in the public and it's, and it's open and it's raw and it's honest. And her music, as you can tell by her voice speaking to us today, uh, her music is wonderful. She's got a great voice and she's a, uh, a freestyle uh, MC uh, as well as a lyricist and an all around performance artist. And so I think her work is wonderful and I, I highly recommend everybody to check it out. Uh, you won't be disappointed. You might not understand it if you're not Swedish, but sometimes it's in English and sometimes it's not. But thank you very much, Carolina, for you, for spending your time today and uh, and sharing so much of your work with the world and and with us. And so, uh, until we see you again, we hope to see you in Miami. Uh, you know, uh, you know, we're getting questions of when are you coming back to Miami. We we want you to come back to Miami to paint more and to share more of your work yeah. with us here. And so hopefully okay. after uh, post COVID, you can, uh, you can come yeah. back and paint some more. Okay. So, so Carolina, thank you very much for, for everybody that joined us today. Thank you so much for taking the time to spend an hour with us to learn about Carolina Falkolt, AKA Blue TFP and her wonderful career and her wonderful work. Uh, my name is Alan Kett. You are listening to us from the Museum of Graffiti. We thank you for your ongoing support. If you come to Miami, come and visit us in person. If you enjoyed this art talk, check out all the other art talks that are here on IGTV. We also have them on our YouTube channel where you can learn about many of the other wonderful artists from this artistic community of writers from all over the world. And if you love this, uh, this art movement or if you're curious about this art movement and learning more, visit the museum of graffiti.com and you can read about what we do there and also join, uh, become a member of the museum or check out the shop, buy a book and support the arts. And, uh, and thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Much love, Carolina. Much love. Um... Peace. Peace.